Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast is Friday, so you know what we got to do. We got to take a look into this week two matchup with the Buffalo Bills. What is it going to take for the silver and black to come away at the victory? That plus a whole lot more comes up on Friday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, September 15th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. To get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available, of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, thank you so much. The show has grown in such a major way, and that's because of you. It's also because of my man, Ari. Ari does a great job every single day. I cannot stress this enough, how much of a great job he does making sure we're on YouTube. Without him, there would be no YouTube. I know I say that. And you probably think like, yeah, okay, you're just saying that. No, no, that's for real. <laughs> if there was no Ari, there would be no YouTube. So many thanks to him. You can check him out on Twitter at Ari Produces. You can always hit me up as well at your boy Q254. Got plenty to get to on today's show. We also got the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. We didn't have any calls and texts on Thursday's show. It's a crossover edition. Joe Marino, Locked On Bills, and myself broke down the game. Well, we're going to break it down as well. But in segment number three today, we will have your calls and texts. So that'll be coming up again. Segment number three of today's Lockdown Raiders Podcast. Segment number two. Going to talk about keys to victory. I do it every single Friday or whatever the last show is before a game day. So, you know, Fridays on Sundays and Mondays on Mondays and Wednesdays on Thursdays, right? I mean, it's just that's what it is. So uh, segment number two, keys to victory. What is it going to take for the Raiders to go into Buffalo and pick up that victory? And remember, I picked the Raiders to lose this game. Uh, they're nine and a half point underdogs. I don't think they're going to get blown out. I really don't. I don't think that they're going to lose by double digits. I think that the game is going to be very close, but I do know that they can win this game. I'm not one of those that think there's no way that the Raiders are going to win. I think they have a great chance to win, and I'll tell you how coming up in segment number two. Here in segment number one, news and notes of the day, as I always do, just kind of scatter shoot, go over the injury report and a couple other things. We'll do that in just a minute after I tell you about the title sponsor, which is Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, no worries. Lowest prices guaranteed. I'll tell you a lot more about game time later on in the show. But let's go over and go over that injury report I was talking about on Wednesday. A pretty big laundry list of guys that did not participate, including Devontae Adams, DeAndre Carter, Chandler Jones, Jacoby Myers, Trayvon Merrick. All those guys did not participate on Wednesday. On Thursday, a little bit different. Wide receiver Devontae Adams, who's dealing with a foot injury. Fully participated. He's good to go. Jimmy Garoppolo, ankle injury, was limited on Wednesday. Fully participant on Thursday. Uh, How about Jordan Meredith? Calf injury was limited on Wednesday. He did not participate on Thursday, so that's a little bit of a downgrade. Safety Trayvon Merrick dealing with a thumb injury. Didn't participate on Wednesday. Full participant on Thursday. That's a good thing. Jermaine Illuminor, he was added to the list with the ankle injury. Not listed on Wednesday. Limited on Thursday. And then... Jacoby Myers has been dealing with a concussion. He's in concussion like uh, concussion protocol. Nothing you can do about that. Just got to wait till he's able to pass all the tests. Did not participate on Wednesday or Thursday. And Chandler Jones, as I mentioned, didn't participate on Wednesday or Thursday. He's not even with the team. He's not going to play on Sunday. I don't think he'll ever play with the Raiders again. And I don't know how this situation is going to play out. I think it'll happen sooner rather than later. But I'm sure the team is going through all the different you know, all the different uh, like avenues and making sure that they dot all their I's and cross their T's. And whatever the situation is, to me, it's a very sensitive situation and it's going to be treated just like that. So that was the injury report for Thursday. Uh, we'll get another one later on this afternoon. And then 90 minutes before kickoff, we'll find out who's in, who's out for the silver and black. The Bills, they're good to go as far as their injury report. They're solid. The only person they have on it, their center, Mitch Morse, he's dealing with a finger injury, full participant on Wednesday, full participant on Thursday. So like I said, he is good to go. I did want to pass some what to look for as far as the Raiders go. And I always get these uh, these emails from NFL Communications. They're a great source of information. They'll send out information about uh, certain players, certain milestones they can hit. And there's a couple that are Raider-related that I wanted to pass on to you. Thought that they were pretty interesting about Devontae Adams. Max Crosby, and Daniel Cash Money Carlson. So about Devontae Adams, with 10-plus receptions on Sunday, 
Adams would own 22 career games with 10-plus receptions, tying Andre Johnson for the second most games with 10-plus catches in NFL history. With two-plus touchdowns, Adam will have 22 career games with multiple receiving touchdowns, the most of such games since 2014. It would also tie Art Powell for the seventh most games in NFL history. So a little few receiving nuggets right there for Devontae Adams. And I know most people say 10-plus catches, Q. That's a lot. Is it, though, for Devontae Adams? No. Not really. And two catches, two touchdown catches in a game, not something I can't see Devontae Adams getting either. So those numbers right there, very achievable as far as I'm concerned, especially if Jacoby Myers doesn't play, which I don't expect him to play on Sunday. How about Max Crosby? With two sacks or more, Crosby will notch his ninth career game with two sacks, tied for the fourth most two-sack games in NFL since 2019 and tied for the fifth most two-sack games in franchise history, tying Khalil Mack with nine. With one and a half sacks, Crosby will reach 40 career sacks in just 68 career games. Just the fifth player to accomplish the feat with the Raiders. The first is Khalil Mack, 2014 to 2017. So that is right there the stat I'm looking for. I'm really hoping that Max is able to get one and a half or more uh, sacks on Sunday. That would be awesome to see him reach 40 career sacks in just 68 games. That's pretty sticking cool. And Max is a guy who, as we all know, came in as a fourth round pick. There weren't a lot of expectations for him his rookie year. He went out there and shined. And he's been shining ever since. He's been getting better each and every year. And so he already has uh, a sack on the season. Uh, That's a good start that he got last week in Denver. See how he builds off of that. And he's going to need to build off that. We'll talk about it more in segment number two. He's also going to need some help interior and on the outside. So we'll talk about it more coming up in segment number two. But those are the little nuggets on Max Crosby. As far as cash money, Carlson, with one made field goal in Sunday's game, Carlson would become the fourth kicker in NFL history to make 145 field goals in their first 80 career games. With seven points, Carlson would reach 600 career points with the Raiders, only one of six players in franchise history to reach 600 career points with the silver and black. That would be for Daniel Carlson. Now, I look at that stat, and I'm really happy for Daniel Carlson because you remember how his career started. He was drafted by the Vikings. He was cut by the Vikings. He sat out there as a, as a free agent for a little while. John Gruden went and made the move and brought him in, and he's had a great career with the Silver and Black. Now, he's made a lot of field goals, right? With one made field goal, he'll be the, only the, first, the fourth kicker in NFL history to make 145 field goals in their first 80 career games. The problem is the Raiders have kicked a lot of field goals, right? They don't have a lot of success in the red zone, so he's had to kick more field goals than any of us would like him to do. But he makes them, so that's great. But you just want to see them score touchdowns. So I'm rooting for him to get that. I think that's awesome, 145 field goals in 80 career games. But then you also realize why he's kicked 145 field goals in 80 games because the Raiders have needed it. With, uh, with seven points, that would be a couple field goals and a, and a touchdown or you know a couple touchdowns and a field goal, whatever the case may be. 600 career points, that would be cool. Again, another reason why he's already at 600 career points, The Raiders have kicked a lot of field goals, so he's been responsible for a lot of points. But I'm always going to root for Cash Money Carlson. He's awesome. It's a great story. Again, a guy that was cut after being drafted by the Vikings. The Raiders picked him up, and he's been exactly what his nickname is, Cash Money, ever since then. So what are the keys to victory for the Raiders on Sunday to improve to 2-0 and head back to Allegiant Stadium for the season home opener in prime time against the Steelers? Well, we'll talk about it coming up in segment number two of today's Lockdown Raiders podcast, and we'll do it after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. And I'm not sure how often this happens to you, but all of a sudden I get hit up. Hey, Q, I'm coming to town. Hey, man, the Raiders are playing the Packers. Let's throw that out there. Hey, man, uh, is there any way we can get some tickets? Man, you got some discount tickets? What do you know? And all the time I say, man, I don't have no hookup on tickets. I would love to have hookup on tickets. I would give my family the hookup on tickets if I could. I don't have that, right? I pay full price for my family. But when I don't want to pay full price and I want to get these last-minute tickets or I suggest to someone else to get the last-minute tickets, I tell them about GameTime.com. Because buying tickets shouldn't be stressful, right? GameTime is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, theater near you, right? It just doesn't matter. They got all the hookup, killer deals, last-minute tickets, their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped up for the fun you're guaranteed to have. Forget planning months in advance. You don't need it. You're coming to Vegas for a three-day weekend. You want to go to the Raider game? No worries. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. Right now, snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, 
Create that account. The redeem code is locked on NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to talk about keys to victory on Sunday versus the Buffalo Bills. Something I do each and every Friday. Always want to break it down and let you know how I think the silver and black can come away with the victory. And don't get it twisted. I know I picked the Raiders to lose when I was talking with Joe Marino from Locked On Bills on Thursday's crossover edition. Uh, just because, well, I just feel like that the Buffalo Bills are going to come in with their hair on fire, be ready to uh, get that taste of, the, of losing to the Jets on Monday Night Football out of their mouth. Right, and so they're going to do everything they can to get a victory. But what that means is I still think the Raiders have a chance to win the game, and I sure don't think they're going to lose by 9.5 points. I don't think they're going to lose by double-digit points. I don't care what Vegas says. I don't care what FanDuel.com says. I don't care what any of those cats say, right, any of the great handicappers out there. I don't care what they say. I think that the Raiders have just as good a chance to win this game as any other game on their schedule. I really do believe that, and I really honestly hope I'm wrong. And I'll tell you this, after I made – the, the selection of the Raiders losing and everything that I've been seeing from all the national pundits out there, from all the different networks, ESPN, CBS, NFL Network, right? Everyone that's an expert, and I say that in air quotes, everyone's picking the bills and they're not even hesitating. And I talked about this on my radio show on Thursday. I was like, man, I just, I, I, I don't trust it, right? When everybody's picking one certain team to win, like it's no big deal. Like, oh, that's a no-brainer that this team is going to win the game. That's when that other team comes back and wins. Normally, that's when the Raiders are on the side of being the favorites and everyone picks them. Normally, that happens to the Silver and Black and they lose that game. But I feel like it's on the other side as well. So everybody and their mother and their mother's mother has picked the Bills to win this game on Sunday. So that tells me that, you know what? On Monday, I'm going to say I'm handing out game balls because even though I picked the, the Bills to lose or the Bills to win, the Raiders found a way to win that game, and here we go. I don't mind being wrong. Matter of fact, I'm happy to be wrong. And they're 2-0 and and now headed back to Allegiant Stadium uh, for a matchup with the Pittsburgh Steelers in prime time. But let's get into the keys of victory. What is it going to take for the Raiders to get that victory and prove me wrong? As I told Joe Marino, this game, in my opinion, is going to be won or lost in the trenches on both sides of the ball. That's just that simple. Like, that's the overall picture. It's going to be in the trenches. The offensive line has got to be stellar like it was on Sunday against the Broncos. Look, the Broncos have a good pass rush, and the Raiders' offensive line kept, uh, kept Jimmy G clean. They got to do the same thing again. And the defensive line, more than Max Crosby, has got to be able to make Josh Allen uncomfortable, right? Don't let him feel free to stand back in the pocket try to pick him apart. Don't let him feel free to just kind of run around the yard and think that he's going to pick up uh, all those rushing yards and be the leading rusher, right? They're not the most physical team. So I think that the Raiders are going to have to be physical on both sides of the ball. The trenches, that's going to be the number one overall key. The trenches are going to be where the game is won or lost. But if you want to look exclusively at the offensive side of things, let's do that. I mentioned the offensive line. you got to establish, establish the run game here. Josh Jacobs, Zamir White, I want to see that one-two combo. We didn't see a whole lot of rushing yards from Josh Jacobs uh, in week one against Denver. That's fine. It was kind of expected. Want to see him really start to get loose. Look, the, the Bills gave up 170-plus yards to the Jets. Now, granted, 83 of those yards was on one play, but that's fine. Josh Jacobs could take it to the house, too. Yeah, we've seen him with the big, long runs as well, right? Seattle last year, the walk-off. You know what I mean? Like He can, he can break the long runs as it, it, he has to as well, and we already know the offensive line has the ability to open up a big hole. So Josh Jacobs, Amir White, I'd like to see a nice little one-two punch. I'd even like to see a wrinkle thrown in there. What do I mean by that? Trey Tucker. I would like to see Trey Tucker used in maybe an end around, you know, the jet sweep, something like that. Maybe even, you know, and this is not really a, a run play, but, you know, just even like a wide receiver screen and let him have the ability to use that speed as a weapon. But it's kind of like an extended run, right? I want to see Trey Tucker kind of sprinkled in and use him as a weapon. He was inactive on Sunday last week against the Broncos. Will he be inactive on Sunday against the Bills? Who knows? If he's not inactive, I'd like to see him out there and just sprinkled in as a weapon. Doesn't have to be like a wide receiver, a uh, slot receiver like Hunter Renfro would be, but just use him as a weapon. I think that that would really go a long ways to this Raiders offense. The Bills, in my opinion, they're not physical up front. Their linebackers are a little undersized. The Raiders could really get downhill in the run game if they so choose to, and if they stick to it. If they get a little bit of early success and they stick to it, I think good things could happen. I mentioned Hunter Renfro. I don't think Jacoby Myers is going to play. Hunter Renfro only had 13 snaps on Sunday against the Broncos, and everyone's like, what in the hell are you doing? Where's Hunter? Give Hunter the ball. Let Hunter eat. Well, this is a good game that Hunter could eat. 
Again, I don't think Jacoby Myers is going to play. We know what Devontae Adams can bring to the table. They need a, a legit number two across from Devontae, and I think Hunter will have that opportunity. And that's the beautiful thing about the Raiders being deep at that wide receiver position. That was one of the deepest positions they had all training camp and all preseason, and they made some tough decisions letting some guys go. Hunter Renfro's there. Go earn that money now. He only had 13 snaps in week one. Maybe this is a, a week where he has a bunch of snaps and has a bunch of production, similar to what Jacoby Myers had week one against the Broncos. I think Hunter Renfro must be a compliment to Devontae Adams. And then as far as Jimmy G goes, just continue to be efficient, right? Get the ball out of his hands quickly. You know, assist the offensive line like he does. If he has to take off for a couple runs, fine. Protect yourself. Do what you got to do. The one thing I'll say about Jimmy G, well, two things. One, don't turn the ball over in the red zone, right? Don't throw an interception in the end zone. I like the fact that they throw the ball in the end zone, but, you know, don't get too greedy, right? If you get into the red zone, you got to score points. If that's Daniel Carlson, you know, he's trying to come away with some of uh, his own personal goals or the goals I talked about in, in segment number one. If you have to kick a field goal, kick a field goal, but you got to come away with points in the red zone. But the other thing about Jimmy G, what I'd like to see from him on Sunday, and that's, this goes back to establishing the run, and have Josh Jacobs really, you know, get cooking, running downhill, they've got to take a shot, a legit shot, right? Open up things a little bit, right? I know that Jimmy G's strength is not taking deep shots all the time, but if you can establish the run, which I believe they can, get Josh Jacobs cooking, then that play action is really effective. Like, they were doing play action passes on Sunday against Denver, and they weren't biting because the run game wasn't, wasn't effective. If you get the run game going, the play action pass will, will work. So I would like to see them take a shot, maybe in the second half, maybe even coming out of the locker room. Like, I would love to see the, the, the Bills get the ball first, let the Raiders get their defense on the field, and then the Raiders get the ball coming out of the locker room. And hopefully everything's going their way. They could take a shot maybe on that first possession coming out of the locker room. I would love to see that, and I think it would be effective, especially if you got a guy like Trey Tucker and his speed, or maybe DeAndre Carter, maybe he's okay. The reason I keep bringing up Tucker is because DeAndre Carter is a little banged up, so I don't know if he's going to go or not. But – that speed, man, that, that speed needs to be used. And there was a shot that, that Jimmy took on a Sunday against the Broncos where it was the flea flicker, and he threw it to Devontae Adams, which is never a bad option. But if you go back and look at that play, uh, there was DeAndre Carter was open, and it could have been a really big play. So I would have loved to have seen him hit the speedster there uh, with that play. It could have been a big one for him. So I think they do need to take a shot or two throughout the course of the game just to keep the defense honest. Defensively, find some help from Max. Again, find some help from Max. You know what he's going to bring to the table. Find someone who can compliment him. Jerry Tillery, um, Kuntz, Malcolm Kuntz, Tyree Wilson, Bilal Nichols. I don't care who it is. Somebody's got to step up and be a compliment to Max Crosby. It'd be nice to get some interior push. It really would. It'd be nice to get Tyree Wilson going a little bit, uh, have him out there, maybe have him out there with Kuntz, maybe put, uh, maybe put uh, um, Tyree Wilson in the middle. You know, like in, in the interior and let him cook there. They've got to get creative and they've got to get a way to make Josh Allen uncomfortable. Max is going to be Max. He's going to do his thing. The offensive line for the Bills, little suspect, especially where Max is going to be lining up. So I think he's going to have a big day. And Buffalo is going to do everything they can to try to keep 98 off the quarterback. That means someone else is going to have to step up. Malcolm Kuntz is a homecoming. He went to the University of Buffalo, similar to Khalil Mack. Going back to Buffalo, go on and make your presence felt, man. Malcolm Coons, go ahead and do that. I know I didn't mention him on the crossover edition when uh, I was talking to Joe Marino. I just want someone to step up. Not really worried about who it is, just want to see somebody. Don't allow Josh Allen to become an effective runner. Don't let him get comfortable, right? Make him a little uncomfortable. And if he, if he is not an effective runner and if someone like, uh, you know, Coons or Nichols or or Tyree or Tillery or Max are putting some wood on him and getting him uncomfortable and making him a little gun shy, especially to try to run and break the pocket because he tries to do it everything on his own. We know that. Then, then some good things can happen. They don't have an effective run game, and don't let, them, don't let them start running in this game. It's basically Josh Allen or bust. Don't let you know their running backs get comfortable, and don't let Josh Allen get comfortable running the ball. When he gives you an opportunity, and Josh Allen will give you an opportunity, you've got to create that play. I think that he's going to give the Raiders an opportunity to come up with at least two turnovers, uh, come up with two interceptions, maybe a strip sack if he's trying to run the ball. If he, if he gives you an opportunity to make two turnovers, at least two turnovers, you've got to make those plays. Good teams make those plays when the opportunity arises. The Raiders have got to be able to come up with these plays when they're there. So uh, Josh Allen's going to set, set you up. I mentioned it coming out of that Monday night football game. The blueprint is there. Can the Raiders effectively make it work? Create at least two turnovers. Special teams-wise, 
kick return, kick return, kick return. I don't care if it's a kick return or punt return. Set the team up offensively with a shorter field, right? Get some dangerous uh, field position, right? Make the other team not want to give you an opportunity to return the ball because, well, you're that good. DeAndre Carter, Trey Tucker, whoever it is, fine. Somebody's got to start really being a, a weapon as far as the kick return game goes, punt return and kick return. As far as kicking off, cash money Carlson, well, just keep doing what you do, right? Make them make decisions on returning the ball. Thought it went pretty well against Denver. I know they had a couple of returns that were, that were pretty decent for them, but for the most part, make them make a decision, make them run the ball, uh, and then let the kickoff coverage team stop them and stop them short. That's what it's all. Always stop them short of 25-yard line. You feel like you've done something, make them go the full length of the field. Uh, and then, of course, cash money Carlson, keep being cash money as far as field goals go. And then A.J. Cole, He's been averaging about 49 yards a punt for, I don't know, the longest last year so far this year. Keep doing that, man. Keep flipping the field. It'll just – all it's going to do is help the Raiders, help the Raiders, and help the Raiders. Flipping the field is a good thing. Don't turn the ball over. I I instead, flip the field. I'm okay with that. So those are the keys to the game as far as I'm concerned in all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. And I'll close out with this. The game is going to be won or lost in the trenches. Bottom line, you pay attention to the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively, and whoever's winning that and dominating that is going to win the game, and we'll be talking about it on Monday. So that's what I got for you for segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up in segment number three, what's on your mind? Your calls and texts, 707-654-4693. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about a couple great sponsors here on the Locked On Raiders podcast, and the first one is BetterHelp. Today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash locked on and get on your way back to being your best self. And you know, there's always times when you have so many things going on in your mind and sometimes you can't sleep at night. Your mind is racing because you have a big decision that you have to make. Maybe it's just a job. Maybe you're at one job, but you're thinking about another. You, maybe you're thinking about a big move. Maybe you're thinking about a relationship or maybe something really bad in your life has happened and you just can't get to sleep at night. Uh, you're, you're stressing out at work. You're not really being your best self because there's just too much swimming in that brain of yours. And that, that happens, right? It happens to all of us. A lot of times I know when I got things going on, I can't sleep at night. And it drives me crazy, but you just can't do it because, like I said, your mind is that weapon where it just stays on and stays so active. Sometimes you need to be able to talk it out with somebody. Sometimes you need therapy. And therapy is something that can help you. And again, it's nothing bad. I know a lot of times people look at it and think it's a bad word. Oh, therapy. This. No, I don't. Yes, therapy is good for everyone. If you're thinking of starting therapy, what you need to do is give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash locked on. BetterHelp.com slash locked on. I also want to tell you about prize picks. What is prize picks? Well, it's just the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. That's all. <laughs> They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. You're not battling against a bunch of people, uh, machines, bots, whatever the case may be, pros, sharks, none of that. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's just that simple. They uh, Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. It'll test your skills on Prize Picks this football season in the most exciting way when you play the daily fantasy sports. And if you've got those skills, once they get tested, you could turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. All you got to do is check out Prize Picks. Again, it offers weekly promotions that could lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Pick discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. What do you have to do, you ask? Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts. Draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with Brian in Pittsburgh. He's called to talk about this game on Sunday versus the Bills. Shares his thoughts on the Raiders being angry and why. Plus, he has a question about a rookie who could potentially be a big-time playmaker. Here he is, Brian in Pittsburgh. What's going on, kids? It's Brian in Pittsburgh. Just wanted to uh, give him a call, talk about this, uh, this Bills game coming up this week. 
I want to point out a few positives uh, that uh, the Raiders got going for them here. Uh, number one, obviously, they're out in uh, West Virginia now, getting acclimated to the uh, the Eastern Time Zone over here in Pittsburgh. Uh, and they they recently, through through the past you know years, they they've tended to play well in in Buffalo um, in the past. Uh, so hopefully, you know, they can get out there and take advantage of some of uh, Josh Allen's Brett Favre gunslinger style throws and whatnot. Another thing I want to point out, obviously, the Bills are coming off a short week. Short week. Uh, yeah, they're coming home. They're, they're mad. They're angry. But, hey, the Raiders should be mad and angry, too, you know. I mean, yeah, we've won, but let's go. Let's go beat the Bills now in their house. So uh, another guy I want to bring up, too, um, Hunter Renfro, you know, invisible. So I'm, I'm bringing up this guy, Trey Tucker. When are we going to see Trey Tucker? Is Trey Tucker going to see the field this Sunday? Is Trey Tucker going to see the field next Sunday? I want, want your thoughts on that, Q, and then uh, hopefully we can go there, get this W, and go home to Allegiant, man, for that home opener against the, uh, against the bank-up Steelers team right now without a, uh, their best interior pass rusher. And Cam Hayward and the number one receiver and Deontay Johnson going down. Also, will be coming off a short week. They play Monday night against Cleveland and Pittsburgh. So, hopefully, we can go into Buffalo get this W. Uh, just want your uh, want your thoughts on uh, when we might see Trey Tucker out there. All right, Q. First nation, baby. Thank you for the call, my man. Appreciate hearing from you. And yeah, I think Trey Tucker could go this weekend. Right, I mentioned it in segment number two with DeAndre Carter a little banged up, depending on if he goes or not. And we'll get the injury report later on this afternoon, so we'll have a better idea if he's going to be a go or not. If he's not, there's no doubt I see Trey Tucker out there, right? If DeAndre Carter can't go, I believe Trey Tucker will definitely go. If Carter can go, then I expect Trey Tucker will probably uh, not play, right? Just because they'll have uh, they'll put a guy in there with a little bit different style, like a Christian Wilkinson will probably play. But again, I kind of think it depends on DeAndre Carter. But as far as the Raiders being angry, I think that they could, they could play angry. Everybody and their mother is picking the, the Raiders to lose this game and not even giving them a chance. At least I'm saying that, hey, it's going to be a close game. They're not going to get just ran out the building, right? But others, even Joe Marino when he was on, I respect the hell out of Joe Marino, but when he was on, he was like, oh, yeah, I think that the, the Bills are going to cover, you know, nine and a half points. That's a lot of points in the NFL. It just doesn't happen like that all the time. So a lot of people think that the Raiders are going to be a walk in the park. Like, boom, it's going to kick off. It's going to be done, set, deal. You know, rap, rap, rap. It's over. I don't see it like that. But I don't think that the Raiders should play angry. I think the Raiders should play hungry. I really do. I think the Raiders should be so hungry to go out and prove not to the outside world, not to me, not to you, but to themselves that they really are the team that's turning the corner, that they really are the team that they believe that they are, that they really are, you know, changing the culture, that they really have raised the standard, that they really are going to get behind Jimmy G and win a bunch of games, that the, the direction that they feel like they're going is correct. I think that they need to go out there and play hungry. And like I said, play hungry for themselves. Thank you so much for that call, my man. I definitely appreciate you. Up next, got a tweet from Al Joseph 79656026. Six. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a tweet. He said, at your boy Q254. He said, what up, Q? I'm sure the Locked On, I make sure the Locked On podcast is my first listen every day. I was a little, little disappointed you didn't mention Malcolm Coots on the crossover edition on Thursday. Seems like the best guy that can help Max on the opposite side. Tillery needs to stay on the inside. I think he's a dude. A little nervous about Tyree Wilson. Looks slow off the ball, but still early. Max will coach him up. Again, that's from Al Joseph, 79656026 on Twitter. And thanks so much for the tweet. I appreciate you. And look, I don't know. I think Malcolm Coots can do it. Um, you know, he had an okay game on Sunday. He's had a, he had a really good training camp and, and a pretty good preseason as far as I'm concerned. He could be that guy. I've been waiting for that guy to be that guy since his rookie year when he was able to come away three sacks and really show in a limited amount of snaps what he could do. But I like uh, the, till, the tillery versatility, right? I like the fact that he could be inside, go outside, be inside, go outside. I think that keeps guys guessing. And you saw Max was moving around on Sunday against the Broncos as well. He was on the left side. He was on the right side. He was kind of lining up all over the place, something that I, I believed going into the season they were going to do with them. Tyree's going to get there. You know, again, the reason why he was slow off the ball is for anticipation reasons. He was trying to anticipate and diagnose what was going on before he attacked the, the, the ball or attacked the quarterback, and he can't do that. He got away with that at Texas Tech. Can't do that in the NFL, right? So that's got to be coached out of him. But I think he'll get there. 
It's just going to take a little bit of time. So we'll see what happens. But maybe Malcolm Kuntz is that guy. Maybe they go in there and have a really good game, and he's the guy I'm giving a, a game ball to. But I do appreciate you making the show your first listen of the day. Thanks so much for the tweet. I do appreciate it. Up next, got a call from J.D. from Salt Lake City. He's calling to talk about Jimmy G and why he's able to help out the defense with his style of play. Here he is, J.D. from Salt Lake City. Hey, Q, this is J.D. from Salt Lake City. I just had to give my two cents of how Jimmy G did better than Derek Carr. Um, I was a huge Derek Carr supporter. I still am a huge Derek Carr supporter. I actually think he has more arm talent than Jimmy Garoppolo. But where I think Jimmy has the edge is he doesn't get as many three and outs as, as Derek Carr. I think he does a better job of making quick decisions, good, quick, good decisions, um, and moves the ball. And, and uh, even if they don't score, he, they still take time off the clock and give the defense a chance to, to rest, to, to be more fresh. So I actually think Jimmy G actually helps our defense because he – did they even have one three and out this last week? I don't. I don't remember one. Um, I just. I just think that's where Jimmy G has the edge. Is I'm not saying Derek Carr is stupid by any means, but I think Jimmy G has the edge between the ears, where he can make those decisions quickly and the correct decisions in McDaniel's system. And uh, I think that's where that's what sets him apart and why we'll be more successful with Jimmy G. Anyway, Q, thanks again. Love your show. Pocket. Thank you for the call, my man. And yeah, I just think Jimmy has a great understanding of what Coach McDaniels wants from that quarterback position, right? He understands who he is. He's not trying to be more than that. As a matter of fact, I had a really good conversation on my radio show on Thursday with Justin Mello from the Draft Network. He put out a piece at thedraftnetwork.com. I do encourage you to go check it out. Jimmy G already proven to be a great fit in the Raiders' offense. So just go check it out on thedraftnetwork.com when you have a little bit of time, maybe when you're waiting for kickoff on Sunday or maybe Saturday. Who knows? Whatever it is, just go check it out. And I think that everyone's really starting to come around, including myself, on who Jimmy is and why he's so important to this Raiders team. But thank you, J.D., for that, uh, for that call. I do appreciate it. And, yeah, just, again, what he does, the way he does it, is exactly what Josh McDaniels and company are looking for. So thank you again, like I mentioned, for that call. Uh, up next, got a text from North Texas Raider. What up, Q? It's North Texas Raider. In my opinion, the end of the game showed the greatest promise for why might why things might, just might, be headed in the right direction. When we scored that touchdown with eight minutes left, there was not a single doubt in my mind that Denver was going to drive down and score. Not one, because that's what past performances has conditioned me to expect. The only question I had were whether Denver was going to score a field goal or a touchdown and how much time was going to be left afterward for us to try to come back. To watch our team actually work both offense and defense to protect the lead, well, it's not something Raider Nation has seen very much in the past few years. Pretty awesome. Hopefully a sign of more grit to come. Love what you do for the Nation Q. Uh, North Texas Raider out. Thank you so much for that text. And, yeah, that was the thing, man. I was impressed with that, too. And that's why I talked about earlier this week. When the Raiders scored the touchdown, took the lead, one-point lead, and Denver got the ball, every single member of Raider Nation thought, okay, are they going to be able to hold this? What's going to happen? Oh, man, I've seen this before, right? I know I felt that way. I've seen this before. I hope that what I saw in training camp is about to happen. And to their credit, they did. They were able to get off the field. And then to double down to make it even more impressive, once they got off the field, they gave the ball back to the Raiders with five minutes left. I guarantee every member of Raider Nation thought, okay, here comes a three and out. They're going to run the ball three times, be a three and out. They'll kick the ball back to Denver. And then you really got to buckle up. Instead, with five minutes and eight seconds left, they salted the game away. Never gave the ball back, right? That was the first time that that had happened for the Raiders in, since at least the year 2000. <laughs> How wild is that? At least the year 2000. By having a one-score lead and over five minutes with the ball, they salted out the game. Never gave the ball back. That was impressive. The combination of what you just said, the defense doing what the defense did, and the offense being able to salt away the game, to me, that, my friend, was impressive. So thank you so much for that. I do appreciate you. Got time for one more call. Raider B in Minneapolis. He's calling to talk about the C word, culture. Here he is, Raider B, talking culture, sharing his thoughts on it. Raider B in Minneapolis. Hey, Q, Raider B here from Minneapolis. Uh, say I, I heard you pass through Minneapolis uh, a week or so back on your way ESPN. So sorry I missed you. If I could have got through security, I would have, you know, went and bought you a drink or something. But uh, anyways, uh just want to wish you success, uh, or congratulations on all your success. You, 
I've been riding with you since Black Hole Banter days and all of your lockdown raiders. Um, spend over three hours listening to you each day, like many of us, and I can speak for all of Raider Nation. I mean, for many of us, you're, you are the voice. There's a lot of content out there, but you are the voice of Raider Nation. Um, you're doing an excellent job, and congratulations. Um, and then quickly, um, we've been trying to build a culture, I feel like, with the Raiders. We've been hearing this year. I feel like there's some there's a culture being built right now for real and just feel a different energy behind the team. And I think that has a lot to do with, you know, Max Crosby, Josh Jacobs, all these guys. But I'm, I want to give um, Garoppolo some serious credit for that because, like you, I wasn't super excited uh, when we got him, mainly because of his health history and everything. But what I didn't know about him was – the vibe he seems to give off, the confidence, um, everybody seems to love him. And it just makes me super excited to see what that's going to bring. So, anyways, great job. Congratulations on all your success, Q. Go Raiders. Raider B, Minneapolis. Peace out. Thanks for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And, yeah, culture is massive, in my opinion. Culture is a big deal. Culture and standard. That's something that we hear every single coach Whenever there's a new coach in town, we always hear that. It's not just exclusive to the Raiders. It's everybody. New GM, got to change the culture. Got to change the culture. What are you going to do, guys? Hello, guys. Got to change the culture, right? We hear it all the time. Everyone's not capable of doing it. The Raiders have had many guys that have tried to change the culture, and it hasn't worked. If this, in fact, is what we're seeing right now, and I'm not guaranteeing that it is, but if, in fact, that is, we hear guys like Max Crosby, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Marcus Peters, even when he signed, the standard has changed. The standard is raised. The standard that used to be the standard ain't the standard. If that, in fact, is what's happening, and they do change the culture, and they do raise the standard, not only is that going to help this year's team, not only is that going to help next year's team, not only is that going to help the t- year afterward, but the more that that culture is raised and that standard is raised and, and is changed around from what it was for many years to what it could be, that's going to help the organization as a whole because then – Guys are going to come into the organization as free agents or drafted players, and they're going to know, oh, wait, you're going to the Raiders? Oh, there's a standard there. <laughs> there's a standard. There's a commitment to excellence there. There's a motto, just win, baby, there. That's what they do, right? But right now, there's been free agents that have come to the team for years on top of years where it's like, oh, going to the Raiders, going to go get a check. Final check I'm going to go get. Okay, yeah, hey, I'm here to win games. I'm here to win games, right? Air quotes. But – once the standard has changed, once the standard is raised and the culture has changed, that will no longer exist. Even guys that get drafted will know, man, I'm excited. I'm going to the Raiders. They win. They, they hoist Lombardis. They win divisions. They win a lot of games. They're the silver and black. Like, that's where it's got to get to. And then you could talk about, well, hey, that's the, that's the Raider way, right? You won't be talking about Patriot West, this, that, yada, yada. No. Raiders way. This is the Raiders way. It was the Raiders way at one point, right? The culture was, the standard was winning. Commitment to excellence. Pride and poise, right? Just win, baby. It was that at one point. The Raiders need to get back to it. And however they do it and whoever does it, that's their, that's the task at hand. Dave Ziegler's taking that on the chin. He's trying to do that. Champ Kelly's taking it on the chin. He's trying to do that. Head coach Josh McDaniel's taking it on the chin, trying to do that. Everyone doesn't like that, but if it gets changed and raised, I'm all with it. I'm with it. So thank you so much for that call. I do appreciate you. And that's all I got time for for today. That's all I got time for for this week. So uh, that's going to do it, Raider Nation. Hopefully uh, we come out of this game and uh, we're talking about the Raiders got a victory and they're 2-0 and headed to uh, back home and, and, and hoping to go 3-0 and against the Pittsburgh Steelers in the season home opener. It's going to be a hell of a game at Allegiant Stadium. I can't wait to be back in the stadium. Haven't been there since the first preseason game of the year, which is wild. So long ago. But uh, that's for another day. Right now, what matters is a game on Sunday against Buffalo. So it's an early kickoff, and uh, the Raiders have been on the East Coast getting their bodies right, so I think that they're going to be ready for it, and they have themselves an opportunity. So Raider Nation, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your family. Enjoy the time with your family. Always love on your family. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the game. We'll talk again on Monday. Until then, as always, Raider Nation, just win, baby.